Hey, hey. Hey. Thank you, and I want to thank, uh, give a special thanks to JavaScript Israel and Trax for sponsoring this, especially at this time. Events for uh, the coding dev uh, for the developer community is super important, so thanks a lot and thanks for having me. And so my name is Dan Cohen. Uh, I'm a front end lead at UVI. What we do here is we scan vehicles and we use AI to analyze the results. Some really uh, cool stuff. But today I want to talk to you about something that could never happen in UVI. Uh, it happened on a side project I'm doing, uh, which is something I recommend all of you to do. It's a great place to try out new technologies and get your hands dirty with some real life uh, examples and uh, use cases. Uh, in my specific case, my side project is an NPO, nonprofit organization, which means that it's not only good for me, it's also good for the world, for those who care about it. It's a, a, a long standing app, it's been up for over uh, three years. It has over 30,000 active users on on its peak hours, it has more than a thousand concurrent uh, users, and I, uh, as a backend, I use Firebase, and for the front end, I use uh, Angular or the Israeli version Angular. Uh, so one morning, uh, like a couple of months ago, I uh, get a phone call from the client telling me that there are some problems with the app. Okay, now since it's on Firebase, it's really easy to just open up the console, open up the dashboard, and get a better look on the situation of your uh, application. Now, I opened this and it took me a second. You, you know what, all of you, just take a look at it and t tell me what you see because it took me a while to understand what does the B stands for? You see the B right there? And once I realized we're talking about not thousands, not millions, but billions of reads, I went straight to the a very transparent uh, payment plan that Firebase uh, gives you. And I saw the document reads uh, cost about six cents for 100,000. Sounds really cheap, right? Like you can buy it for anyone and it would be fine. So I started calculating it, but it wasn't as easy as you think because first of all, I'm mentally broken. I, I can hardly type anything. My fingers are trembling. And I tried to type like nine zeros, right? Billions of nine zeros, I think so. And the result really shocked me. It, I found out that in less than an hour, I spent over $7,000. It uh, reached up to $8,000. And uh, I want to show you how. But before I show you how, what do you do? Imagine for a second this thing happens to you. Okay, you open the dashboard, you see this number, what do you do? What's the first thing you do uh, for immediate remedy? So I'm sure some of you are thinking about shutting down production. Now, luckily, Firebase gives you a really easy way to do it. There's like this big red button, shut down the project, but it's not the first thing I do. That's the, I did, it's the second thing I did. The third thing I did was to notify the uh, client. After all, they have like 30,000 users to let them know why the uh, app is down. Uh, third uh, or fourth, I back up the project. I want to make sure that I have the data right now because I don't know what's going to happen. And last but not least, to find the cause because I do plan to fix it. But the first thing I did, and this is a very uh, important tip, was to cancel my credit card. Let's not, uh, let's not let it escalate every, uh, even further. So let's talk about uh, the root cause. So in broad strokes, a little bit about the architecture of my app. Uh, as you know, Firebase is a NoSQL, uh, it offers you a NoSQL database among a, a lot of other solutions, which means that you have collections that store documents. Now to those collections, you can attach uh, triggers that uh, run on certain events such as on updates. So once a document in my member collection is being updated, I immediately calculate the price, the membership price. Now, now, in case the price hasn't changed, then I just break the function. But in case the price has changed, then I'm creating a new uh, document in the transaction collection, a collection holding all the transactions, and I'm creating a new one with the new rate. But uh, as, uh, same as I did an on-update trigger, I attached an on-update trigger for the members collection. I also attached an on-create trigger for the transaction collection and uh, which runs another cloud function, a different cl cloud function that calculates the member's balance. And once it finishes calculate, it updates the member. Now, as you can see, I have a potential for an endless loop here, but who needs to worry? I have this uh, uh, breaking condition. 
What can possibly go wrong? I'll let you ponder about it for a second, but I'll give you a little hint. These are not primitives, which are fairly easy to uh, uh, compare in JavaScript. These are actually objects, which, and then the plot thickens. Now, I pinpointed the exact line of code that caused it. I I'm not sure that all of you can see immediately the problem here. This is the uh, breaking condition. This is what caused the, all the problem. Um, but as you can guess, we run a tight shift here in Idanko and Industries, so I immediately went to GitHub to know who I should blame. And believe it or not, the person I should blame was no other than me from three years ago. So don't worry, I fired that guy. He's no longer with us. But before I fired him, I interrogated him about that, uh, the, the mindset that caused him to write this terrible, terrible piece of code. And it gave me an insight to the inside of, a, of the deviant mind of a bad developer. And I came up with some really uh, uh, interesting uh, notions about how, we, uh, how this happened. And I wanted to share it with you. You're all great developers. I'm sure you won't do any of his mistakes. But uh, again, it's a good uh, thing to know what he did. So first thing he did was Google it. <laughs> Who Googles anything? I remember everything by heart. But he Googled something like comparing uh, objects in JavaScript. Makes sense, right? And he came up with this excellent question from Stack Overflow. What is the best way to compare objects in JavaScript? And the first answer gives you the first method, fast and limited, and you probably can recognize nice this uh, piece of code which he probably copy pasted who does that i only write everything from scratch but if he would only read one more line one more line he would know that when you use a uh, json stringify the order of properties is important and i went to the uh, uh, logs and i catch the exact moment that this condition failed uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but these are the exact same object, only the order is different. Here you see the value is last, and here is next to last. So, if you're comparing a JavaScript object, uh, you should do it the right way. So, uh, a, a few nice tips. First, you can simply use manual comparison. Uh, find a unique uh, a property, probably a unique uh, UUID, and compare only those. You can also create a, a shallow function method that goes over, iterates over all the properties and compares them one by one. But if you have an object with nesting object, you should create a deep equality uh, method but you can read more about it here. Just don't do the same mistake I, I'm sorry, he, him did. Uh, but that still doesn't explain 12 billion reads. So how did that happen? Uh, for that, I have the, calc ba the calculate balance method to uh, blame the cloud function. What it does actually, and that's pretty trivial, uh, it sums up, uh, as you can see here, this is a query in Firebase, it sums up all the documents in the transaction collection that uh, belongs to that member. Makes sense, right? But uh, if you have a problem in your app and this uh, collection becomes huge, then it would be better, and this is one of the first remedies I did, is to limit this uh, uh, query. Now, a thousand is obviously an arbitrary number, but there's no viable use case in which a user should, uh, a member in my uh, app, should have more than a thousand transactions. So this is a good, uh, let's say, protection. But even a better method to do is to use something that Firebase uh, 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 created for you. And this is an increment uh, command, which allows you to change the value of a, uh, of a property of a field without even reading that document. You can just pass the delta, the change, and it would apply it. You don't need to query anything. You don't even need to fetch that specific document you're updating. You can just send the increment command. This is a really nice uh, 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 feature. So if you're aggregating documents and you're not as stupid as that guy, Guy, you should do it the right way. How to use? No, no, no. One second. There we go. Okay. So deltas are much better than summing up everything from scratch. And uh, always use Firebase in increment. That's a really useful tool. You can read more about it here. And so the next steps I did in that specific terrible, dreadful day. 
So first is deploying a fix, which again, Firebase makes it really easy for you to do. Deploying a, a, a changes in Firebase is really easy and really nice. I should investigate why the alerts didn't uh, work because I'm not that, uh, he's not that idiot. He's not that stupid. I did created alerts uh, for a budget and reach out to Google and beg for my life. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the budget. As you can see, I have a budget limit here of 200 shekels, a little bit less than seven, uh, $7,200. Uh, but uh, it, uh, as I found out, uh, budget alerts are about an hour, two hour behind their delay. So the email I got from Google Cloud saying that 100% of my budget is reached, it was sent at 3.59 when the incident, as you can see, ended like almost two hours earlier. So if you're uh, doing a Firebase project, there are much better ways to setting up limits and alerts for your project. First, use an ex set up an execution time. There's no reason to settle for the default 60 or 30 seconds. If you have a function that shouldn't take more than a couple of seconds, you can limit its execution time and uh, thus preventing a bad escalation. Uh, even better, you can cap read and write in uh, Firebase. You can cap memory usage. So if a, a cloud function tries to read like a billion uh, uh, documents, for example, uh, you can make sure it, it won't succeed. You can cap external APIs. That refers to uh, uh, something similar to what uh, the first uh, uh, talk was about. You can use an application like PagerDuty that would make sure that you're uh, uh, up at 2 AM when something like this happens. And last but not least, you can write automations. You can uh, write automations that automatically click that big red button. Now, it's not something you want to use every day, but in case of emergencies, this is a really a, a good way to protect yourself. You can read more about it here. And for the long term, a few tips for uh, uh, those of you who don't want to end up like that guy, uh, write test. Uh, that could have saved me a lot of trouble. Logging. Again, Firebase gives you a lot of tools to uh, log uh, events uh, in your uh, cloud functions, and that really helped me to pinpoint the problem really quickly. Uh, you should limit queries, as I showed you earlier. It shouldn't be endless, no reason for it. Uh, you should set up limits and alerts, as I showed you in the previous slide. And you can become a better developer. Uh, doing uh, Failing is an integral part of uh, doing. And when I interview candidates, I'll always ask them about their failures. It's usually much more interesting than their successes. And uh, you can really measure a person about how he it, it, by how he grew from uh, he or her mistakes. And last but not least, speak about it as I'm doing right now because I'm sure I'm not the only idiot out there. And now when uh, cloud uh, uh, tools and Firebase in specific becomes an integral part of every architecture, this is something you should all be aware of. Now, I want to leave uh, with a nice note. So Here's the happy ending after long deliberations with Google. They were super nice and they were willing to forgo uh, almost 90% of the bill. And the last 10%, I consider this as a tuition fee. Uh, it, uh, I, I learned my lesson and hey, it got me here. So it wasn't that bad. Uh, that's it. I'm Dan Cohen. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned from my mistakes. And uh, if you're a better de developer than that guy, we're hiring.